you have to just excuse me. I can't get away from this thing about the promises of God. It's Go just on. been what God has been speaking to me about. And, you know, when we look in Scripture, we look and we see in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 4, it, it says that God has given us great and precious promises. Yes. And, uh, and these are the promises, it goes on to say, that give us access to his divine nature, which tells me that God's power is in God's promises. It shows me that the power of God is in the promises of God. And what I love about this, this idea is we see it illustrated beautifully in Joshua chapter 6. And many of us know the story real well. It's Joshua, the Israelites. They're trying to get to the promised land. They come to this place called Jericho. It's a city. It's huge. There's walls surrounding it. There's soldiers and fighting men. And they've got to get to the promised land. Uh, but there's a big problem in the way. And we know that they march seven times, seventh day, they shout and the walls fall. But if you slow down and you go back to the beginning of that story, you see the very first thing that happened was God gave Joshua a promise. He said, see, I have given you the city. See, I have. Not I will. Great. I have. I got to stop right here and just thank God for the I have promises. Uh, it's not I will save you. It's I have saved you. Yeah. It's not I will deliver you. It's I have delivered you. It's not I will set you free. It's I've already done it. I thank God we serve a God that has. He says, I have prepared a table for you in the presence of your Come enemies. On, I got to just thank God for a minute. Excuse me, because I serve a God who Come says, on. I've already done it. I've already gone before you. I've already done it. And this is why I'm so passionate about the promises of God. The first First thing, I mean, before the first soldier started marching, God says, here's the promise. Come on. Because the power of God is in the promise of God. He says, here's the promise. And, and I believe that every problem we face in life, God has a promise for that. Mm. Uh, you know, Apple releases a new phone every year. And recently I was at the mall. They released this new phone. And there was a line out the door of the store, down the mall, wrapped around the food court. People are waiting in line five hours to get this new phone. Because Apple uh, has this phone that can do everything. And they've got this marketing slogan, you know, there's an app for that. You know, you, you can't find your car. There's an app for that. You need to get a reservation. There's an app for that. Uh, you, you, you're still single. You need a date. There's an app for that. they got an app for everything. Uh, but God's got a pretty cool slogan, too. For every problem we face in this life, there's a promise for that. God says whatever your situation, whatever your struggle, whatever you're going through, there's a promise for that. Right now, if you're watching on a global audience and you need to get to God, there's a promise for that. Jesus says, if you place faith in me, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus Christ from the dead, you will be saved. If you're sick right now and you need healing, Jesus says, by my stripes you are healed. I was bruised for your iniquities. If you're struggling financially, God says, there's a promise for that. I am Jehovah Jireh, your provider, and I will supply all your needs according to my glorious riches in Christ Jesus. So whatever we're dealing with, there's a promise for that. And what I love about this, oh, oh you got to excuse me. I get excited about this. Uh, what I love is Joshua gets this promise, right? He gets this promise from God. And, and by the way, we'll wait, in, we'll wait in line for five hours to get a phone, but we won't wait five minutes to get a word from God. Um, God, God gives this promise. Now, now I, try to, I try to put myself in Joshua's shoes. Like Joshua's the leader of the Israelites trying to get to the promised land, and now he's got to call a meeting. Now, I don't know about you, but I try to imagine this meeting. Uh, hey, everybody, come over here, gather around, all million of y'all. Um, here's what we're going to do. All right, we're going to camp out here. We're going to march around, and we're going to play some music. All right, we're going to camp, we're going to march, we're going to play our trumpets. And, um, and that's how we're going to defeat the enemy. You know, there's at least one Israelite in the background that's like, Joshua, ain't nobody got time for that. We got to go. You got us out here having band camp. We got to get to the promised land. What you doing, Joshua? And jo Joshua's like... Can you see him? Josh was like, um, yeah, I know, I know, yeah. But uh, me and God, we, 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 we talked. And uh, by the way, nobody can talk either. In fact, you can't say one word to the day I tell you to shout. And then the way we're going to bring the walls down is we're going to yell at them. That's all I got, you know? The Israelites are like, well, how are we going to do this? But you know, in all reality, Pastor John, what I love, and this is what we're seeing happen in our ministry, uh, when they got a promise from God, they didn't care how foolish they looked. They didn't care how dumb they looked out there marching around. They didn't care what the other people thought. And we got to get to the place where we stop caring what people think about how we worship God. Uh, 
If you, that's why I get excited. I don't care that I'm on worldwide television. If you could see hey. the way I lived then, you would understand the way I praise him now. If don't, don't judge my passion until you've seen my past. If you could see what God rescued me from, then you'd understand why I get so excited. Daniel! Don't judge my breakthrough until you've seen my been through. He's been too good to me. He's been too faithful. He saved me out of a life of sin. He didn't hold anything back from me, so I can't hold anything back from him. I apologize. This is an interview. Don't Apologize. I apologize. This is an interview. No, it's not. But God's promises are yes, oh, and they are amen with us. And so when God gives Joshua this promise, they begin to march. And here's what happens. We know the story. They shout and the walls fall. But, but why, why did they shout? Why did they praise? <laughs> why did they do that? Because, because they knew, they knew that they had a promise from God. And the power of God is in the promises of God.